Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to learn another concept with respect to the routing feature, which is catch all routes. To understand the concept, let's consider scenario number six. Let's assume we are building a documentation site for a project that we have created. We have a couple of features and each feature has a few concepts to be explained to the audience. So let's assume our site nav looks like this. We have five features and the first feature is expanded to show five concepts. What we want to achieve is a unique route for each concept in a feature. So localhost port 3000 slash docs slash feature one slash concept one docs slash feature one slash concept two docs slash feature two slash concept one docs slash feature two slash concept two and you get the idea. Our documentation site might have 20 features and each feature might have 20 concepts. This leads to a massive 400 routes for our application. And now that you know Next.js has a file system based routing mechanism, 400 routes corresponds to 400 files in our project. But of course, we can make use of dynamic routing. If we replace the concept file with a concept ID dynamic route file in each feature folder, we would be down to 20 files. This looks much better. And if you replace the feature folder with a dynamic feature ID folder name, we would be down to one folder and one file. This looks much better. But we have to keep in mind that for every additional path in the URL, we would need to have another level of nesting in our pages folder. So concept one slash example one perhaps will lead to another level of nesting. And if you think about it, every page in our documentation website will have the same page layout. So can we not define one file that can catch all the route segments in the URL? We most definitely can, and this is where the catch all routes feature of next router comes into picture. Let's go back to VS Code and understand how it works. In the pages folder, I'm going to create another folder called docs. Within this folder, we're going to create a new file. The file name is special to Next.js. Within square brackets, we specify three dots similar to the spread operator and then you can provide a name of your choice. I'm going to call it params, which is sort of the convention. It refers to the parameters passed in. The file extension is .js. Within the file, we can define a simple component. Function doc, which returns an h1 tag that says docs homepage. We of course have to export it as the default. Now what is special about this page though is that it will match any URL that contains the docs segment in the path. Let me head to the browser and show what I mean by that. In the address bar, if I type slash docs slash feature one, we see the docs homepage. If I navigate to slash docs slash feature one slash concept one, we still see the docs homepage. If I navigate to feature one slash concept one slash example one, we still see the same page. So our catch all route, as the name indicates, catches all the URL segments and maps it into one single file in our project. And this is useful for something like a documentation site because we want the different segments in the URL for better organization and SEO. But at the end of the day, 
the layout for the document will remain the same. So we define it once, but render it for multiple variations of the URL. Of course, this isn't as useful if we can't capture the different segments in the URL. So let me show you how to get hold of that. Once again, we rely on the next router package. At the top, import use router from next slash router. And within the function body, const router is equal to use router. And we destructure params from router.query. Let's log the value to the console. Now params here refers to params in the file name. If we save the file and go back to the browser, open the console, you can see the params array with three items. Feature one, concept one, and example one. So unlike dynamic routes where the ID is a string, params is an array. Also, you can see that initially params is undefined and this is because of the pre-rendering feature in Next.js which we will talk about later on in the course. As a quick fix, you can set the initial value to an array to ensure your code doesn't throw a runtime error. Let's use the params array and update our JSX to render the different elements within the array. We're going to check if params.length is 2. And if that is the case, we return an h1 tag where we say viewing docs for feature params of 0 and concept params of 1. Else, if params dot length is equal to just one, we're going to return an h1 tag viewing docs for feature params of zero. And if the user tries to enter more than two segments in the path, we can simply render the docs homepage text. Now this JSX, of course, is completely up to you and how you want to handle the different routes. Ideally, you would be using the params array to fetch the documentation for the corresponding feature or concept. And this, of course, is params.length. Let's head back to the browser and test this out. In our address bar, we have three segments, which means we render the docs homepage. However, if I navigate to slash docs slash feature one, we just have the one segment and the JSX is viewing docs for feature feature one. This is the segment from the address bar. And if I navigate to slash feature one slash concept one, we see the text viewing docs for feature feature one and concept concept one our scenario number six has been implemented. Now another use case I can think of for catch all routes is to pass filter parameters for a page. Let's assume we are building a real estate website. As a user, I want to view a list of all the houses listed for sale. But I should also be able to filter the houses based on my budget. To cater to that, we can create a catch-all route where we have a route for slash houses and this would list all the houses. But I can also enter slash 100,000 slash 1 million as my min and max budget. The catch-all route can extract these values and filter the list of houses which can then be displayed to the user. I'll leave this use case to you to try it out, but hopefully you now have an understanding of the catch-all route in Next.js. And one last thing I want to discuss in this video is that there is an optional catch-all route as well. At the moment, if we navigate to just slash docs, 
we see a 404 error page. And this is taken care of by Next.js and we will talk more about it after a few videos. But what I want to say here is that Next.js provides optional catch-all routes to help with this scenario. All you have to do is back in VS Code, wrap the square brackets with another pair of square brackets. If you now go back to the browser, you can see that the same catch-all routes page is rendered for just slash docs as well. Now this is really helpful in our documentation site to render the home page for just slash docs and then the individual pages for slash feature one and slash concept one. All right, we have now covered quite a bit about Next.js routing, but we are only halfway there. Let's explore the remaining half in the upcoming videos. Thank you all for watching. Please do make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications.